want to speak to classical composition and some of the fundamental rules. With Josh Garrick's show coming in October, and I'm not sure the Francesco di Mura at the Cornell, uh, I've, I've indicated a couple people how my dad, when I was pre-adolescent, would show me paintings like particularly from Francesco de Mura, uh, and have me point out the composition. He would teach me the composition of those paintings and then have me point out and test me out on them when I was about 10 years old. And I'm very fond of Francesco de Mura. He has everything. He has composition, he has anatomy, he has color and drapery, all, all the fundamental things that you study in classical art. Anatomy and drapery, huge. They don't teach that anymore. The first fundamental thing he taught me when I was about six, I think was the first lesson, but it was reiterated continually, is that parallel lines equal static, which equals depth. You'll be hard pressed to find in any classical composition, any Baroque composition, or high Renaissance composition of static lines. You'll find them in Van Eyck's work. <clears throat> the way you overcome that is you can overcome that by offsetting and slipping a line. Now, there's a strange thing that happens, particularly when you start stone carving. You'll see your measurements will, will, will start, you'll start picking up these star patterns all through your sculpture, you know, triangular patterns and star patterns from measuring with calipers. <clears throat> when Vitruvius quotes Polycleitus in his 10 books in architecture, he talks about symmetry. And the symmetry isn't only from the left side to the right side, we're symmetrical that way, but he talks about a logarithmic spiral symmetry. For instance, the arm is divided into six sections, one, two, three, four, five, six, and each logarithmically getting smaller, but still maintaining a type of symmetry. This is what Vitruvian man is all about, uh, that uh, Leonardo da Vinci drew. And you can get the full description in 10 Books of Architecture by Vitruvius. So that's what we're talking about when we're talking about the symmetry, is self-similarity. You'll see this in the, you'll see this in the um, uh, golden mane, the golden rectangle, how things break down logarithmically. You'll see that you can also find that in the face. But anyway, After we take a line and slip it, we can, we can do the same thing with convex. On the human form, there are very, very few concave areas. There's the area behind the Achilles tendon, right up in the eye socket area, you might find a couple places, but you'll find mostly convex shapes. Concave. Should, uh, demonstrates depth. You got to be careful when you're drawing the human figure or modeling the human figure in clay that you don't get too much uh, concavity. And so you take these, you take this line and slip it. And you can take another, maybe more like this, maybe another like this, and you have a leaf. Or you can take this concave line and make a hand. You'll see that in the Baroque particularly Francesco de Mura, that the anatomy is secondary to the composition. Drawing 
and understanding the bone structure and muscular skeleton structure is important, but the movement is more important in the Baroque. So there's not a, 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 an academic adherence to anatomy. The anatomy will play into the movement uh, and be subordinate to the movement. What I want to point out, so when you see a Francisco de Miro painting, look for these type of lines that you'll find at the very smallest to the very largest part of the composition, you'll see a line that will move like across a cloudscape or a set of trees. And then you'll have another group of lines that will move like this and move like this. And you'll find that the composition has this spiral effect throughout. And so if you'll see an arm offset by a set of draperies and then by a set of clouds, this is what we call the Baroque spiral. I can't find anything on the internet. But when you look at, <coughs> at the, the paintings of Francesco, Francesco, Francesco de Miura, look for the, these lines that tend to go through and slip. And, and it'll be on the very widest scale to the very most minute scale that the lines will have this rhythmic quality to it. That is, you'll see it in Tiapolo's paintings, you'll see it in um, even Goya. Masonic symbol because it's a perfect unit of measurement. 